my god hi my loves it is alicia otherwise known as princess glitterhead you found yourself on my dental ch diary channel and today we're just gonna hang out i'm going to do a little update and i'm gonna just remind you guys that we are doing a giveaway i'm drawing the winners august 6th this is my thank you for 1 million on tiktok giveaway 10 winners are going to be getting one of my with or without t-shirts my original design that's my good side on the front my little princess with a dental crown and then on the back we have the gummy side and it says we all deserve to smile glitterhead dental diaries and so 10 of 10 winners august 6th all you have to do is be following this youtube channel leave a comment on the giveaway video which is the one right before this one and be following my main tiktok which is linked in the only link that i put in the description of this video so don't forget, I'll be drawing the winners August 6th, so that's coming up. And if you were wondering, this is not my real hair. No, I did not just go get bangs. This is a wig. I just got these recently in my P.O. box from a brand called Bogsia, I believe. I hope I'm not butchering the name. B-O-G-S-E-A. So I have this one. This one has curls, and it's more of a warm brown. I am very impressed very impressed i didn't have to do any work with this i didn't even put the wig cap on i i'll show you at the end of this video because i have another one i'll show you the other one and how it looks and i'll show you how easy these are to put on um once i give you all my little updates that i'm going to tell you but it's, it's just beautiful so all i did was put my real hair in a bun at the back of my head and i just put this wig on up and over arranged it and that's it that's all i did that's amazing this is the other one. This one is closer to the color that I usually get. Actually, I usually get more of a cool brown, kind of, but this one's more of a warm brown. Josh picked this one. This is the one he liked. I've gotten mixed opinions. Some people are like, oh my God, I can't with the bangs. I don't like the bangs, but I just, it's so fun. I love it. And I think it's very youthful. So this one has bangs too. It's just a different color and it's straight. So I'll show you how she looks in a minute. Um, but so I just wanted to get on and tell you, you're going to be seeing some very exciting things happening very soon in the near future. Buzzfeed has, um, they, they did another article about me. It's on Facebook. It has about 4 million views at the moment, which is crazy. Miss Amzie, I am making a video in a minute. Can you let me finish this and I will help you when I'm done. It's just gotten such a positive response with a lot of people that can relate to needing dental care at different times of their lives. And and just what a heavy weight it really is to deal with. And I've said this many times, but I strongly believe that it's harder to live with your bad broken teeth. It's harder to live with bad teeth than it is to live with dentures. It really is. So I really empathize and feel for people that are that haven't started yet or aren't able to right now because there's so many factors and variables to consider going on in the world right now. Um, everyone's in a different place. So just remember, nothing is forever. Everything is fixable. It's just a matter of timing. That's all it is. So just hold on to the hope. If you are waiting for your, your process to begin, it will. Just try to stay positive. This is why it's also so important for me. Um, I've been trying to just be okay with myself no matter what. Like we always feel like we're evolving or like we're always striving for something. We always feel like, you know, once I get this or once I'm here, I'll feel better. Once I look this way, I'll feel better and this, 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 and this. But like the real key to happiness is to find a way to be happy with where you are right now. Or it just be okay with it, not like happy and whatever. If you're in a bad place, obviously it's just an understanding and being patient with ourselves and patient with the world and everything that's going on right now. Just remind yourself, nothing is forever. This is fixable. Um, and so that leads to the other thing I wanted to say. A lot of people say things like, I wish I had your confidence. And how do you get so confident? And I've been telling people confidence is a lot like working out. The more I thought about it, the more that made sense. But confidence really is like working out. If you want your body to look a certain way and you want your body to be super healthy, there are certain things that we have to do to get there because it is not just given to us. Much the same with confidence and our mindset. That doesn't just come. That's something that you have to really put the work in. You have to think about, you have to challenge your ways of thinking. You have to think about the, the, your own insecurities and why you feel that way. But then I have been, the way that I've been able to kind of accept myself is by reminding myself that I accept everyone else the way they are. So if I can accept everyone else, why the hell can I not accept myself? You know, why is it that we 
we find it the hardest to accept ourselves. Like we are our own worst critic, you know? What if you could change that? What if you could be your best cheerleader? What if you really weren't your worst critic, you know? What if you got to a place where you trusted yourself? And what if you really knew that your opinion of yourself weighed hev heavier and weighed more than anyone else's opinion? What if we could really get people to totally take ownership of their own feelings about themselves and then realize that the power to change your beliefs lies within yourself. We're not waiting for someone else to come say it's okay now. Now it's okay for you to accept yourself. Nobody's going to come. Like nobody's coming to make us do what we have to do. We have to help each other and we have to be able to do that for ourselves. So with confidence, if you want to grow your confidence, you have to start practicing your confidence. And what I tell people to do, I tell people to just do one thing on one day when you're in the mood to start, you know, working on it, just pick something that day that you know would be good for you to do. Do something that's good for yourself. Something that either makes you feel good, something that you know will make you feel better tomorrow. Do something that's going to set your day up tomorrow to be better. And then make it a habit that you do something every day that's going to make tomorrow better. You cannot go wrong. Like you really can't. And this isn't even, um, you know, you don't have to do it every day. I feel like when you're, you're starting out, when you're really starting to pay attention to things about how you feel about yourself, start slow. This is something that you're going to be working on for a while. It's just one day at a time. Everybody has bad days. Um, and, but it truly, it really is just about practicing it. Like I have a lot of heavy stuff I deal with. I get a lot of comments and they affect me in different ways. Like just because I'm a confident person doesn't mean that words don't hurt. Doesn't mean that I'm not still absorbing certain things. Doesn't mean I'm not still seeing certain things that are really not okay. Um, but I know where the truth is and the truth lies where I feel how I feel about myself. It doesn't matter how someone else feels about me when I know how I feel about myself and I know myself better than someone else is going to know me. So, you know, I can't like, it just doesn't matter what someone else thinks of you if they don't know you, you know? So that cannot weigh more than how you feel about yourself. That's all I'm saying. So just start working, working it out. Do the confidence workout in your mind. You're just, you talk to yourself and then start, oops, almost died. You talk to yourself, but you also try to see yourself outside of yourself. What would you be telling yourself if you were your best friend? What would you say if you were your little sister, your mom, your daughter, your grandma? What do you tell people around you when they're insecure, when they, you know, they're not feeling themselves? Like, it's a really good practice to actually sit in front of the mirror or even film yourself. Talk and just talk from your insecurities and tell it to yourself. Say, I don't like this about you. I don't like this. I don't like that. And then reverse it and do a video where it's only saying what good things you like about yourself. And I think that you'd be able to see there's really an ebb and a flow. There's never going to be complete acceptance and happiness of every little thing, but it can change. Like I could say, if I didn't like my chin, my little dimple, my butt chin, <laughs> my dad gave that to me. That's from my biological father. My dark eyes are from my father. Um, my freckles are from my mom, my pigmentation of my skin, that's from my mom. My mom had that and, and she's a beautiful woman, a beautiful person. Some of the things that make our favorite people beautiful to us are not things you see on magazine covers. And I think that's very important to remember, super important to remember because your babies that are watching you, they're not comparing you to what's on TV. They're literally not. The people that our kids grow up with and see are what shapes their perceptions in life. And if they see that it's okay to take care of yourself and it's actually a good thing to take care of yourself, it's a good thing to be happy. It's a good thing to be confident. It's a good thing to know what you need. You know, that's healthy. It's not selfish. We've been told for a long time, I feel like, as maybe as women, just that, you know, you don't wanna look too needy and it's not a good thing to need attention. Like who, if you're wearing so much makeup, it must be because you need attention. You know, not everything's about attention, but one thing I will say about attention, it's not a bad thing if you need attention to know you need it and say you need it. It's something you need. Everyone needs attention on some level. If you know that you're missing it and you need it, you have to find a way to meet that need. Don't, don't let shame hold you back. 
shame holds people back from a lot of things. And the only reason I feel this way is because it's what happened to me. I feel like for the longest time, I was just so ashamed of my dental situation that I didn't even want to go looking at options. And I had convinced myself that I would not be able to afford it, that it would be too difficult, that it's gonna take too long. There's just no perfect solution. I was mind blown when I found out about these removable snap indentures that you literally can go in there, have your teeth pulled, implants placed, same day, immediate load, snap indentures, no money down, like holy crap, what? And that's really what it is. So the first, now I have one link in the description of this video. If you click on that link, it's gonna bring up all my other links. And the very first one on top is the link to set up a free consultation with my amazing dentist, Dr. Todd Shatkin. We call him Dr. Todd. And if you set it up through that link, it's got a little bit of my story and you scroll all the way to the bottom, set up your consultation. It's free, but that's where they'll do all your x-rays. I use the sand beige, this is from NYX the NYX liner. It's called Sand Beige. That's the name of it. These are waterproof but creamy. This is the most universal one that I have. I use this under red lips, pink lips, nude lips, this brown. So this is how it goes on. Just really super creamy. But once it dries and sets, it doesn't budge waterproof completely. And then these are my two favorite lippies that I always use on top. The one I have on today is Lavish and they're both from Live Glam. This one's royalty, so it's more of a nude pink. This is like a nude beige. So Live Glam is the lip club I do. It's $20 a month. You get four of these lippies a month. You can customize it or be surprised or skip the whole month or trade for a different collection. Every single month you have that option. $20 a month and the link in my description will get you one for free if you join with that link. So I'll show you what these look like next to the liner. This one is lavish. And this is one of the most frequently asked questions I get is what's on my lips. But this is what I use. This is what I've been using all year because I can eat with these. And I do recommend after you put the lip liner on, then you put your this over top. Just do it like three thin layers, two or three thin layers. But thin is the way to go. You don't want to put too much of a thick layer on. You want to let it set nice and thin because it's very opaque. And then you can layer it on top. And... Oh wait, that's not the right one. Yes, it is. Why does it not look, oh, it's just too bright. I was gonna say, it looks see-through, but that's right, that's the pinky. This has been more my favorite lately, but I love them all so much. So that's that. Um, aside from that, what else did I want to tell you guys? Oh, okay, so something very exciting. We just got done filming, holy crap. We had a film crew at the house, and this is exciting. Um, um, so they had reached out to me to ask if I would like to be a part of a project that features people who have been something, been through something traumatic, but, and usually it's a physical thing that they've been through. They feature people who go through something like that, but to end up confident and able to help others feel more confident and comfortable with their reality. I was extremely flattered and humbled that I was even asked to be a part of this project. And so when you guys see, once I'm able to tell you and share what it was, then you'll be able to see why. I just feel like I've seen, I've seen this show and I've seen their series and they really do feature amazing people that have been through like really, really traumatic things. Um, so for them to ask me to do this, I'm just extremely humbled. <laughs> it doesn't even feel like real life. Uh, but and we didn't even know like how this was gonna go because the person that set it up was actually from England and her name was Shannon She's an amazing woman. I love her so much. love her accent But she she just said yep So you're gonna have like a one-man film crew nine to five They're gonna come to your house meet princess glitterhead and the family and you know show a little behind the scenes and we're gonna interview you and ask you some questions and show you with your family and um, it was just kind of like wide open so the day of the shoot, um, my God, like we just kind of went nuts trying to prepare, you know, it was at our house. So imagine what you would do if, if you, like I've been living, I live in the country, okay? So my house never has to be ready for company. And that was something I kind of prided myself on for the longest time. Like no one's ever gonna just pop in. 
um yeah until like the whole world is coming into your house and they're gonna see your house so we have been in the middle of like trying to remodel and stuff for a while we've been trying to fix things trying to decide if we want to do an addition to this one or try to find our dream house or like what are we gonna do so we've been trying to just fix the cosmetics and make it as nice as we can while we're still here but hold off on the addition not really sure yet so um I also wanted to get some new furniture because we really have not ever bought brand new furniture. We've just always got hand-me-downs um, or, you know, we just keep it forever and we don't really replace it that much. So it was exciting that I was able to buy some furniture for the family. Um, that was another whole ordeal. We went to Big Lots the night before filming thinking that we were going to get an L-shaped couch and sofa that night, a new TV stand, a new kitchen table, um, a hallway table I wanted, a rug, like an end table thing. We needed a whole bunch of stuff, you know, so we went to Big Lots and we spent over an hour looking at the couches before we decided on which one we wanted. Then we turned around and asked the guy that was sitting right there the whole time, like doing something, watching us look at the couches and we're like, hey, could you go check in the back for this one? And he's like, we don't have any at all. I'm like, come again? He's like, nope, we don't have any. I'm like, you don't have any? He's like, no, I don't even know when we're getting them. They just fly off the thing like hotcakes. <laughs> like, wow. So that was bad luck. So we did not get a couch. Then the kitchen table I wanted, they didn't have that. They did have the one we ended up getting, which I really like because it's got a bench. But you guys will see some of this because it'll be all part of this episode when it airs. And it should be something that you can watch on YouTube, I believe. I'm not sure where else it'll be posted. I think they said Snapchat, Facebook youtube i just think it'll be in different forms for different apps um but yeah so it's exciting i can't wait to show you i can't wait till you see it i think it's gonna be i think it'll be nice um it was really important to me just because it doesn't really focus just on being traumatized losing your teeth it also talks about my current mindset and how i think now which is really important because we can talk all day about what happened in the past and the problems from the past, which we also went over that too. But it's important to document how much different I feel now and how much different I even think now. And I do feel like being able to express myself and not have to worry about my teeth smelling bad, breaking out of my mouth all the time, being infected, hurting, swelling, not having to worry about that, just having the health of my mouth back is priceless priceless. If you are someone that's on the edge and you're really nervous, I'm just letting you know right now, I've always said this, but I have zero regrets about what I've done with mine. Don't miss my teeth. I'll never have a toothache again. Um, teeth were just not for me at this point. And I mean, I'd rather just trade for denture life and deal with the imperfections that go along with that because that's not perfect either. There is no perfect solution. I will never have as strong a bite as I used to unless I get like fully cemented teeth, which I would consider doing. I don't even know that's something else though. So another update, um, my dentist and I are going to be doing some projects together. So you'll be seeing that soon. We, I want to do an interview. So if you guys want to give me some questions that you would have to ask an implant dentist, he does, he's a mini implant specialist. So just keep that in mind. He doesn't do the standard implants, but he probably knows about them but he's an expert with the minis. But he also does partials, he does veneers, he does bridges, he does single teeth replacements, he does multiple, he does full bridges, all sorts of snap indentures, all different kinds. So any questions you guys have, I would love to be able to include that and ask those questions when we do this interview. Um, that would be awesome. I've got some that I wanna ask him, like for people that struggle with periodontal disease and people that struggle with their with um what's it called like the the receding gums like when you can start to see the roots of the teeth like is that too late to get implants or can you still do it do you need a bone graft how does that work um lots of questions like that but i think that's it for as far as my updates my dentist and i are doing some things there's a new show coming out that we just filmed and oh and like i said for anyone else for anyone watching that was a part of that i just want to say i'm extremely impressed with the team that came the videographer it was um two brothers that came and the one main videographer he brings his brother to kind of help they were amazing like my children i was worried for extremely worried for my adhd eight-year-old 
I was worried it would be too stressful of an event because they were going to be here all day with cameras. Cameras can be a trigger too sometimes if she doesn't want pictures, she just does not want to cooperate. But I didn't want to like ostracize her. Like I didn't want to pull her to the side only and be like, hey, now we're having a film crew here and you have to be on your best behavior. I didn't do that. And I didn't want her to feel like we were expecting her to be bad. So I just didn't say anything other than what I told all the kids, explained everything that we're going to be doing. They were all really excited. They've been excited for weeks. They couldn't wait to be on TV and they were going to be a part of it and everything. And they did get to be a part of it. And the people, the guys that were filming, Neil, his name is, he was very patient, but he also let the kids see what he was doing. Like he'd say, you want to see, come over here, like watch behind the camera, like see what this does and see what this does and push this button. And he let them be involved. It was a full day and they never acted like they were stressed from the kids or like the kids were annoying or like anything. It just flowed. Everything went really good. I was able to get, you know, um, my thoughts out. I liked the questions they asked and how they, it just felt some, it just felt right. Like it felt like meant to be. I can't say how, how happy I am with how it went. I was a nervous wreck. Like, I don't even know why it's kind of just because like, you don't know who's coming. You don't know what personality type it is. I've never filmed with anyone. So I just didn't know how it was going to feel. And these guys, they're meant to do what they do. They're amazing. I highly recommend them. If anyone's looking for a videographer, and you need somebody, hit me up. I can refer them to you. They do travel. They're very good. So, all right. So I'll show you guys how easy it is now that we're at the end. I think that's it. Um, just make sure that if you would like to follow me on my other platforms, everything is linked in the one link down below. Just click the link and then it will open all my links so you can go down and see what you might have missed. I'm going to show you this easy wig though. All right. So like I said, all I did I didn't put the the wig cap on. So if I pull this up like this, you can you can see the wig because it's not actually it's not like glued down or anything, but no one's going to be doing that. So as far as I like I'm very happy that for an unsecured wig, I'm just saying these are amazing. So this is what it is, ready? I'm going to look crazy in a second. <sighs> like where did all my hair go? So <laughs> I'll show you the inside. So this is all it is. It's just a wig. I didn't even tighten it. It doesn't have any clips. It just totally fits and sits on my head like perfect. Love it. So there's that one. It came curled. I think that's number five. And the one I'm going to put on is number one. So I just put my hair in a very sloppy little bun. I just showered today and didn't really feel like doing all my hair all day. So just because I knew we were going to soccer anyway, and I wanted to try my wigs. All right, so I'll show you how I put it on. So I have the, the bangs are in the front. I'm gonna put it on so that this back piece is gonna hook up underneath the thing, underneath the bun and kind of just pull forward. Let's see if you can see, I don't think you can, but kind of like this and I just bring it up like this and then feel for the where the part line is, <laughs> hold on. Okay, hold on. We gotta get it straight on my head, find the part line. Okay, okay, okay. The part is right here. Okay, so it's like this, kind of like this. What do you think? I fucking love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want some more of it, but I love it. I love it. A few people were like, no, I don't like the bangs, but I know guys, I just don't ever have any bangs. So I wanted to try something that was going to be a little different. Some people think that it's a more youthful look, but it feels amazing. I love the bangs. You can get it without bangs. I do like this color on me quite a bit. This is a lot more similar to what I usually wear with my extensions, more of a, I guess you would call it more an ash brown. It's so pretty. It's a perfect length though. And this is so easy for like running out of the shower. You just, like, especially if you're going on a date or you're going out to dinner and you want to look nice, but you don't have time to do your hair, get you a couple wigs, go play, go play and be merry. But yes, I just wanted to hang out with y'all today. I feel like we, we haven't seen each other in quite a while. Um, 
we got a lot going on on Instagram. I did repost quite a bit from filming day to Instagram. If you want to see that, you can watch it on IGTV replay. But aside from that, I guess I'm going to let you go. I got to go put the kids to bed and then go put the husband to bed and then go put this ass to bed. <laughs> But yeah, that's about it. I love you guys. If anyone is struggling and you really need someone to help you through, I have given out my email. It is princessglitterhead at yahoo.com. Just know I can't get back to everyone. I do try my best when I see emails with people that are going through a lot, currently going through their surgery. I try to get back to them and just at least offer a friend just so you know someone's there that has been through it. Um, and I wish I could get back to everyone, but I definitely can't. Um, Tell me what you think of the wigs. Which one did you like the best? I got a couple of mixed, uh, mixed opinions, so I didn't know which one would be better, but I love them. Josh picked the curly, so I wore it to soccer. And we were live at the soccer game. That replay is on Facebook. My page is Princess Glitterhead. My group on Facebook is Glitterhead Beauties. If you want to be a part of our group, that's more for you to post and less for me since I post everywhere else. But if you want a place to post and interact and meet friends and people that are already in our little community, Glitterhead Beauties is a good place to start too. That's on Facebook. But I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm probably just rambling and rambling and rambling. Hopefully some of this made sense and hopefully it was helpful. And I hope you guys have a good night. I'll catch you next time. I'll see you August 6th to pick 10 lucky winners. And then we're going to have to do a 2 million giveaway very soon. We're also doing a, a giveaway on Instagram for hitting 100,000. There's going to be one press to kill press on nails winner. Then there's probably going to be, I, I think we're going to do a winner with Glam Lux Lab press on nails. And then there will be a cash winner and a merch winner. So at least four, three or four winners. So make sure you're following my Instagram. The link is down there too. And it's just Princess Glitterhead. You should be able to find me. So I will see you soon. I love you guys. Mwah.